Welcome once again to the Maryland episode, the second version of this. This is one time I can say I'm glad to be tagged up. When most people think of Maryland, they think of beaches, boardwalks. That's not what we think of when we think of Maryland. When we think about Maryland, we think about Danny Calloway and John Third, our two good buddies that are probably some of the best deer hunters and best deer killers that we know. They produce big deer kills year in and year out. That's a big old buck. This year, we're lucky in the fact that literally, Danny and John Third have, I mean, they went on a killing spree like no other. So saddle up, get ready. These guys are some of the best at killing mature whitetails in one of the most difficult places you'll ever see in your life. These whitetails in Maryland are swamp ninjas. These two guys are amazing at self-filming. This show is gonna be one of the best of the year. She's so Hollywood, she ain't Hollywood. That's a big deal, Chris. Are you driving? What a deer, son! I hate to keep harping on it, but honestly, I have never seen two guys work as hard as they do to grow and hold mature whitetails. They do it 365 days a year. You know, I'm out here to my farm. I'm about to go back, fill my feeders up. It's, you know, it's my weekly routine, and it's, uh, it's something I enjoy to do. You know, this is my farm, and this is where I had the opportunity last year to hunt one of the biggest, most unique whitetails I've ever seen. Now this deer, to me, is world class. The palmation on it is just unbelievable. Uh, it's just one of the biggest palmated deer I've ever seen. We've been growing this deer for, for what, two years now? He's a little seven point buck, and he's been hitting that protein feeder. He's been demolishing that monster meal for the past two years, and that's what he's put on in a year. One year older and the proper nutrition and that's what you can do. If people would just let them walk and give them the groceries they need. I think the key factor of all this was the supplemental feeding program that I put in place. And by supplemental feeding program, I'm talking about Monster Meal. I was getting pictures of this guy. Now, I know he doesn't look like much. He's just a three-year-old deer. I said, you know what? I'm gonna start feeding him Monster Meal. I'm gonna put this stuff to use. I'm gonna see you know, exactly what we can do and the results were mind-blowing. I mean, this guy actually fed on Monster Meal from, I'd say, December all the way through the winter into the spring, the summer months, those peak antler growth months. I would say that the results kind of speak for themselves. This is that deer. Check out that growth that this deer put on. Now, this is one year. What more of a proof of a result do you need of, of a deer that just absolutely exploded with the proper nutrition in one year. I have never seen two individuals hunt deer harder than Danny and John. There's not a single day all year long that goes by that I don't get either a brown and trail camera picture, a picture of him putting monster meal in his feeders, them out picking up sheds, pictures of trails, rubs, scrapes. They hunt year round. These people won't go on vacation because they have to keep up with their deer. These guys have tried a lot of different seed, but for them, the Winter Peace Plus from Whitetail Institute works fantastic. They become masters at putting these little quarter acre to half an acre size food plots in the middle of the swamp. Anything they can do to dupe one of these bucks to come out of the swamps, they're gonna do it. Go ahead, subscribe to our channel, like it. You're gonna get that little notification bell. It's gonna go off, let you know when something new hit. Follow, subscribe. Happy hunting this fall. We love everybody. Thank you again. No surprise to me that in the middle of October, the October lull that everybody talks about, you can't kill big deer, you can't kill mature deer in October, 
Danny can. Danny Callaway can kill a big deer anywhere you, you let him out on if you give him enough time. And this was a classic example of literally providing a deer with what he needs in close proximity to where he's bedding. And in October, yes, ladies and gentlemen, they do get up and move. They move really slow in October and not very far, but if you can get close to where he's sleeping, you can kill him. That thing went down and killed somebody in China. And that dad on there was gonna be good when you got blood red. Right hey, we're sitting here staring at the ground. Look, very lazy. Man, am I pumped to go here and get my hands on this deer? Come on, dog. Dude, what a deer. Man, what a boss. Look at the neck on this joker. Beautiful deer. Oh my god. Man, I'm tickled to death. What do you think? Man, that is a gorgeous deer. Look at that deer. I want to get out of here because this is actually a, another big deer's bedroom. And I don't want to mess it all up sweating in here and hot. So, we're going to get him up out of here. Earlier in the year, Danny killed a deer that was just crazy massive. And like always, it didn't take long. He's got another one on the ground. A big 10 pointer in the state of Maryland. Congrats, Danny. Make sure you subscribe and like the page. On top of that, make sure you click the little notification bell. That way you'll be one of the first ones to know when a new video drops. Now, one thing people may not know about John and Danny is these guys are so humble. You don't see them out bragging about the size of the deer they're killing and they're not, you know, exploiting it on social media and acting like they're the best deer hunter in the world. They're the guy next door, they're your weekend warriors, they love what they do, and they're so dedicated to killing these big deer, and that's just what they do. I mean, these guys never cease to amaze me. You think that they'd slow down during the season, but they just don't. I swear they gain steam like a locomotive once they get on the tracks and get to rolling.
hurt. Funny story, he was he was on this big deer, 170 inch top deer, and had permission to hunt this ground and lost permission because a couple of guys had asked the landowner if they could hunt. They then didn't, didn't want John Third on the ground. So rather than causing a commotion and saying anything about it, he graciously backed out, let those guys have that ground. Well, they ended up making the landowner mad. The landowner calls John and says, hey, you're welcome to come back and hunt this ground. They're gone. So John goes back in there and he had put all of this work and all of this time into these deer, you know, feeding them all year long and feeding this one particular deer and getting camera uh, pictures of him all year long. And then he loses it, but then he's able to come back and he picks up the regimen right back to where he, where he left off. And that's what paid off. This deer came right in, beautiful footage, self filming, which I'm absolutely terrible at. Um, but these guys, they practice it and they will not take the shot without it being good footage. Man, what a deer, dude. That is a stud. Look at all the little trash and stuff he's got around his base. I looked up and I seen him coming. And I mean, I knew he was a good deer, but I never ever expected him to be. When I walked up on him, I was like, holy cow. He's way bigger than I ever expected. This is one time I can say I'm glad to be tagged up. John cracks me up. He's he's one of these country boys that it's rare to come across somebody like John. He's very humble. I've hung around with John a whole lot. He talks really slow. So having a conversation with him is fun to me because I just like listening to him talk. But as far as a deer hunter, he's he's one of the best. And obviously Danny is too. We need you to support us guys. So go over, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. And every time we post something, you're gonna get that little bell going off and you're gonna know instantly that you can go over and watch it and catch what's going on. You would think after two giant whitetails have hit the ground, he would kind of pump the brakes a little bit, not Danny. They're on a roll. Danny's got another mature eight pointer that he has history with. Um, if, if I were that deer, I probably would be changing my zip code right now. It's opening morning rifle season here in Maryland. It's super quiet. And I'm right back in the middle of a bidding area. And I had two shooters on this stand yesterday. One, 10 in the morning. He was here for an hour. It's so still. So I'm just gonna shut up. And I'm gonna see what happens. And hopefully there's one still in the area. I just hit that estrus call about five or six times and blind called in a big old six. He had some some small threes, little crab claw threes out on the end. But I mean he come right to the base of the tree. I tell you what, I almost picked the bow up on him, but I know there's a big one here so.
Hey man, I tell you what, I hope that Joker just went down. Oh, that's Tank. That's a big old buck. And what an absolute giant, giant, big, beautiful eight pointer. Well, I had to go back home and get my ace number one deer tracker, Miss Addie Grace. Well, this is where I shot him. He was standing right in this water. He come from right over there, Addie. Look, he come right out of that, that old high bedding area. He come skirting in here. He's gonna get him bite me. Look, look on the ground over there. See that? This is Tank. He's either six and a half or seven and a half year old deer this year. He's an absolute legend on this place. Very elusive. I don't think anyone's ever seen him hunting. Very few daylight pictures. And he just surprised me this morning. He popped in and showed up. I mean, he's got incredible mass, incredible twos. Just a gorgeous deer. He's big because the broadhead's still in him. Yeah, he broke my arrow off. You can actually feel the point of the broadhead coming out right there, trying to exit. But he didn't go far, did he? Something that continues to amaze me about hunting Maryland is how different the terrain is. The footage of Danny's deer walking through this swamp and this water, I mean, it is beautiful. How many people get the opportunity to hunt deer in a place like this? What better way to end a season in Maryland? These guys were on six giants six count them okay they put five big deer down on film um who knows what next year will hold you know when it comes to white top deer hunting i've learned that you have good years and you have bad years you got to ride that way when you can but as hard as these guys work as time goes on you're starting to see more and more consistency out of them killing mature deer i bet you next year they're gonna have some giants to chase and i don't know about you man but i'm gonna get my my pop and my box of popcorn i'm gonna sit here and be ready for it to come